Hello and welcome to this week's YouTube video. Today's video is about something extremely interesting and I think a lot of our subscribers would appreciate it. Today's video is about repetitive patterns and trends that we find on the stock market. I know that a lot of us follow technical analysis, we look at chart patterns, Fibonacci numbers, we look at Elliott waves and a number of uh, such patterns that tend to repeat into the stock market. Now, if you look at it from a long-term investor perspective, you would find things like the Santa Claus rally, the January effect, the October effect, and you know, such repeated patterns that can help us identify the buying opportunities into the market. In this week's video, we are going to look at some of these extremely interesting opportunities. What are the best months to invest into the stock market? And what are the worst months? Uh, for the stock market returns. Is there an October effect that is present to the Indian stock markets? And can we find out a buying strategy based on these patterns? So stay tuned for extremely interesting insights coming out from this video. But before we start, please do not forget to like and share this video to increase the engagement. It really helps us out. And please do comment on what you would like us to film next. So when do stock markets behave the best? Stock markets tend to outperform between the months of November to April compared to the period between May and October. And this is known as the effect called selling May and buy in October. And this is a quite well-known. And you can look at this chart on your screen and you will see how prominent this effect is. This research has not just been done into India. This has been validated across 14 countries from 2 to 15. And you can see it clearly on this chart. In all of these cases, between November to April, the stock market has outperformed uh, the other period across different geographies. In fact, if we look at the S&P index performance between the two periods, November to April and May to October, you would see that the November to April period has outperformed the May to October period by 10 times. Right? So investing between the November to April period in the S&P 500 would have given you a 10x profitability. What are the best months and the worst months for stock markets? This is very important to know. Long only traders may want to avoid historically weak months or they may want to invest in historically weaker months, right? Here are the average monthly returns for the period 2000 to 2015 for the S&P 500. And as we can see, there are three very poor months, which is January, June and September. February and August also don't do well. However, there appears to be a significantly better performance and better monthly returns for stock markets in March, April, October, November, and December. Why does September perform poorly for stock markets? Let's look at September, which is seems to be the most challenging month for the stock market, especially when we look at the S&P 500. If you had invested $1,000 over time, and we looked at this on a segmented basis, from a month on month comparison from 1960 to 2022, the investment would have decreased by about 40% resulting in a value of $600. However, if you had invested in October, it would have given you $1,785, a 79% increase. November shows even better returns and so does December as you can see. Why does this happen? There are a lot of reasons to explain September's poor performance. One of them is that it's the time when a lot of investors conduct rebalances of their portfolios after summer, which can also lead to a lot of stock market volatility. That's also the end of summer break for a lot of families. Big significant events have happened in October and in September, specifically the black market in 1987, the 9-11 attacks that happened in one. The Lehman Brothers collapse in 2008 also occurred in September. The most recent Israel-Palestine war also started towards the end of September, early October. So there is a lot of data points that can skew the results when we look at a historical month-on-month -month average returns for this entire duration because there were a lot of these sort of black swan high events that have happened which have fundamentally reshaped the stock market for that period. Here are the best months and the worst performing months when we look at the seasonal patterns over a 20 year period of the US stock market. A lot of it is very similar to what we might see in Indian markets as well, but this is obviously very catered to the US market, right? And as you can see in this table here, we can see the NYSE composite, the S&P 500, the NASDAQ 100, these very different 
stock indices have performed very well across April, July and November. In some cases, October has also done well. In terms of the worst month, we find September is obviously there, as we discussed earlier, along with January and June. So will the October effect occur in the Indian stock market? Let's look at the monthly return of the NSE 500 and the BSE 500 between 1999 to 2007. This research was conducted by International Business and Economic Research Journal in May of 2000 and they found out that both of these indices had a significantly higher return in the months of November and December compared to the rest of the year. October sees a slight dip in both of these indices with the monthly average return picking up in November, which is 8.55% in December, which is 6.4%. Surprisingly, March seems to be the one of the worst times to invest in the stock market. And this could be on the account of the budget previously being released in the March, and now it has changed to being released in February. But let's get back to November and December data. You can see a statistically significant outperformance in both of these months. We look at statistical tests and the mandatory tests, you know, done on the data and we see that the outperformance in November and March is a statistically significant event that occurs quite frequently. But this was data before 2008. Now let's look at data between 2013 and 2022. In the last 10 years, the Nifty index has predominantly had a positive return in the month of October, having done well in 9 out of 10 times and on an average October has given a 3% return. If you look at other indices like the Nifty Midcap indices, they have a 100% and October has given an average return for Midcaps, which is 3.33%. Nifty Bank and the Nifty Financial indices have also consistently ended positively in October with the average return of 6.2% and 5.4%. Indices like Nifty Metal, Auto and energy have all shown a positive return in October when you look at 8 out of 10 such years. Why do we see this positive trend coming out in the months of October, November and December in the Indian stock market? So there could be a number of reasons. Number one, we are just entering the festive season. There is Onam, Durga Puja, Dashera, Diwali which boost consumption, spending and you know spending by households. The second reason could be that this is when the companies release their quarterly earnings and this brings up a boost into the stock prices. The third reason could be that this is the end of monsoon season and in Southeast Asia, planting and harvest season begins which brings an impact to the commodity prices. Globally speaking, if you look at the seasonal patterns, stock market improves when the summer season in the global market ends and money is expected to enter, pushing prices up for the last few months. Another concern could be that this is the year end. So tax planning strategies like, you know, tax harvesting, tax loss harvesting, and seasonal pack, especially in countries like US, could bring down this price pattern. So this begs the question, if you were to invest in October and then sell your stocks in May, what would actually happen? There is a research that has been conducted into this, which is obviously known as the October effect or the May effect, where people buy stocks in October and sell stocks in May. Let's look at some of that research. Uh, here is a research, research that was conducted for the US stock market for over a 300 year period. And this is called the October or the Halloween effect. Here are the 10 year, 30 year and 50 year rolling window returns when we look at the Halloween effect. As you can see in this chart for the 10 year period, pay attention to the dark solid line, which shows the Halloween effect for the 10 year rolling window. Uh, the two other lines that you can see here are the confidence level, the lower confidence level and the upper confidence level. And what we can see is that it's only negative, really speaking, in the 1940s when the large major events uh, for the UK stock market would have been the World War II ending and the exit of UK from India. But other than that, it has done well over time. And we can see similar results when we look at the 30 year and the 50 year rolling window where the effect becomes even clearer as we smooth out a lot of these noise effects and sort of day to day occurrences that might be impacting the 10 year returns. These researchers also looked at a 100 year rolling window and they went as far back as 1793 till 2009 and found very similar results as you can see in this graph. Let's compare the Halloween strategy to the buy and hold strategy. There is consistent outperformance of the six month switching strategy for the Halloween effect. And here is the interesting thing. 
the October effect gives higher average returns, about three times higher. It also outperforms the market nearly 91.56% of the time for a 10 year horizon. Real interesting point is here, the standard deviation, which is a measure of the volatility of the risk of for the strategy varies depending on the horizon. And what is really interesting is that the shorter the horizon, the lower the volatility, but the longer the horizon, the higher the volatility, which is natural. But this volatility is skewed positively. And what that means is that there are larger gains and more frequent gains than there are larger losses. And this is always favorable when we look at such strategies. That's it, done. Great, I'm done with the videos. The bottom line, what does the October, November and December mean for us in the Indian stock market? So we all know that the festive season has started and the political spending due to the you know, election year is going to drive towards the end of November 20. Premium segment will drive sales Consumption has been weak in entry level products. Industrial activity aggregation numbers point to a healthy economy. Inflation and inconsistent monsoons have affected rural incomes, high food prices, especially in fact low income brackets more. Rural demand is, however, expected to improve with FMCG demand turning positive in August. And there is also a rebound among consumer durable products. But this year, because of the festive season, is not foolproof. Patterns are not always accurate predictions, and you never know what will happen. So always watch out for multiple cues in the market, and always be careful when you allocate based on these strategies. Patterns are not a foolproof strategy and not a guarantee of future returns. Economic, political, or unexpected global events can disrupt these patterns. And seasonal patterns that we have been talking about can change based on the and the political conditions in the different countries. So what about the October, November and December effect on the Indian market in 2020? Only time and as always, please remember this is just an educational video. It is not a guarantee of returns or a promise of your performance. Please do follow your advisor's advice and understand that investment in security markets is subject to market risk. If you enjoyed this video, please do not forget to like, comment and subscribe. It will be helped. Do let us know what other topics you want us to cover. Happy investing and we'll see you in the next one. Investment in securities market are subject to market risks. Read all the related documents carefully before investing. Don't forget to